Hello, my name is Ben Shappy. I'm a Hubble Fellow here at Carnegie Observatories, and I'd like to tell you today about my recent paper entitled, The Nearby and Bright Type 1A Supernova Assassin 14LP. Type 1A supernovae are among the most luminous explosive events known and are visible from halfway across the universe. However, even though they have been used to discover the accelerating universe, the nature of their progenitor system remains unknown. It is generally accepted that supernovae involve the thermonuclear explosion of a carbon-oxygen white dwarf, but the basic details of this picture, such as the nature of the binary companion and, and the sequence of events leading up to the supernova explosion, are still hotly debated. A popular model for the progenitor system, known as the single degenerate scenario, is illustrated here. This scenario has a carbon-oxygen white dwarf accreting material from a non degenerate companion until it reaches a critical mass when it explodes as a type 1a supernova. In this model, the supernova ejecta will then strike the companion, creating a shock which may be visible for the first few days after explosion. Thus, supernovae caught extremely early may be used to constrain their progenitor systems. The All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, or Assassin, scans the entire extragalactic sky in both the northern and the southern hemispheres roughly once every two to three nights in V-band down to a limiting magnitude of 17. On December 9th, 2014, we discovered a new source with a V-band magnitude of 14.9. This source was one kiloparsec from the center of the galaxy, NGC 4666, which is a member of the Virgo Cluster Southern Extension. We designated this new source, Assassin 14LP, and we released its coordinates to the community less than five hours after the discovery images were taken. We then classified this object as a Type 1A supernova less than a day and a half later. In this paper, we present new pre-discovery data as well as follow-up observations covering 100 days after discovery. However, to place constraints on the interaction between the supernova ejecta and a possible companion, we first need to determine the explosion time. We do this in two ways. First, we fit a power law to the pre-discovery and early time follow-up photometry of Assassin 14LP to determine where these fits have zero flux. The pre-discovery data came from both the northern and the southern assassin units, as well as the Japanese amateur supernova hunter Koichi Itagaki. The early time follow-up photometry were acquired by the Carnegie Supernova Project, Liverpool Telescope, LCOGT Global Network of One Meters, and the Swift Space Telescope. We found that we discovered Assassin 14LP just two days after first light, and we detect the supernova in observations acquired more than a day earlier. Second, we use the expansion velocities of the early time silicon and calcium absorption features present in our spectra to fit for the explosion time assuming the power law relationship presented in Piro and Akar 2014. These observations were acquired with the MDM 2.4 meter, the Apache Point Observatory 3.5 meter, and the Fred Lawrence Whipple Observatory 1.5 meter. The explosion time we found by this method is about two days earlier than the time of first light we determined by fitting the early time light curves. This discrepancy points to a possible dark time between when the supernova exploded and when it began to brighten at optical wavelengths. We then used both of these explosion time estimates and our pre-discovery data to constrain the presence of shock emission between the supernova ejecta and a possible companion. Here in our figure 8, we constrain the radius of a possible companion depending on the actual explosion time. If the explosion time was near that determined by fitting the absorption lines, our observations rule out a companion larger than about one-third the radius of the sun. If the explosion time was closer to that determined by fitting the early time light curves, our constraints are weaker. However, for all reasonable explosion times, we rule out the presence of a red giant companion. Although Assassin is not specifically designed to find supernovae as early as possible, the discovery of Assassin 14LP less than two days after first light is quite encouraging. Furthermore, the previous Assassin epic, taken less than one day after first light, found that Assassin 14LP was 1.5 magnitudes above our limiting magnitude. However, we did not trigger on this observation because of poor weather conditions. But this does lead us to question, what is the earliest that Assassin could discover bright nearby supernovae? To address this, we use our early time power law fits of Assassin 14LP to determine that we would have been capable of detecting this supernova just 9.5 hours after first light. Thus for bright, nearby supernovae, cadence is the limiting factor. Unless it is more rapid than every 10 hours, deeper surveys do not have an advantage over smaller aperture surveys. In addition, Assassin has greater sky coverage than its larger aperture counterparts, which allows us to discover nearby supernovae over the entire sky. If you'd like to know more about our work, please see our paper which is posted on the archive. 
Thank you.